Will we be raptured, before, the tribulation, or after, the tribulation? Christians are divided over this issue, and only one view is correct. Which view is the truth, as presented in the scriptures? One problematic scripture, and our base scripture for this study is 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3, which speaks of a falling away. I believe, if we can get these two words figured out, without a bias, we will arrive at the truth, and the rest of the puzzle pieces will fall into place. God did not give the scriptures so that only Bible scholars could interpret it. He gave it in order that the average man can understand it as he is being enlightened by the Holy Spirit. I am not a Bible scholar. I have not read any man's books on this topic. And I will show you from common sense logic, and everyday observations, as given to us in the scriptures, what these two words, falling away means. According to the Strong's Concordance. Number G646. As highlighted in the yellow, it says. In 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3, the phrase, the falling away, signifies an apostasy from the faith. And a close derivative of that meaning, is, G647, as highlighted in the yellow, means. A defection from the truth. So, according to that era in time, and according to how the people of that era understood the words, falling away, it only meant a defection from the faith, or to forsake the truth. And it was only used in two scriptures. And that being, Acts 21 verse 21, and 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. Now, let's give it some content. Scripture says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let's examine these words, and see what it is speaking to. Highlighted in the yellow it says, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Most Christians today says, this is talking about the secret coming of Jesus to rapture the church. I take issue with that, because in chapter 1, which this chapter 2 is a continuation of, is speaking about the second coming of Jesus saying, The Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I believe we should continue with the same topic, as what is being discussed in chapter 1, and carry it through to this current chapter 2. Highlighted in the green, it says, And by our gathering together unto him. This is clearly a rapture verse, as our gathering unto him is only accomplished, by the resurrection, that includes a rapture. Did you notice, how Paul joined the gathering of us? Highlighted in the green, to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Highlighted in the yellow, which is his second coming, according to the subject matter spoken of in, chapter 1. Highlighted in the red, it says. The day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ is at hand, has reference to the gathering of the saints to Jesus, in the green, which will take place in conjunction with the second coming of Jesus, in the yellow, according to the subject of the second coming of Jesus, spoken of in chapter 1. So, Paul is saying to the Thessalonians, Don't be disturbed by any means, believing that the rapture, included in the second coming, is at hand, and you have missed it, and you are currently living, separate from God. Then he gives them evidences, why they cannot be in that day, saying, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed. Highlighted in the red. It says. That day. What day? The day of Christ, listed above, also highlighted in the red, 
that will execute the resurrection and rapture, as highlighted in the green. To be performed at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, as highlighted in the yellow. And as spoken of by His day of wrath, as seen in chapter 1. So, the second coming of the Lord, to perform our gathering to Himself, will not occur, until there is a falling away first, highlighted in the lavender. And we have determined that the term, falling away means, to turn away from the faith, or a defection from the truth. Now, some kind of way, we decided in our era, that the term, falling away, has changed, and now means, to be removed from the earth. Let's consider the term, falling away, again. The word, falling, always means, to go downward without exception. When you slip, you fall downward. When you trip, you fall downward. When you fall away, you fall down backwards. And concerning the scriptures, falling away means, to go down backwards away from the truth. It cannot mean lifted up, as the word falling always denotes a downward motion. Let's say, I witnessed the rise of some air balloons into the sky. And when explaining it to you I said. I saw some air balloons fall away from the earth, into the sky. This is a contradictory statement, because you cannot say something is falling away, which means descending down, when in truth, it is being lifted up. Likewise, you cannot attach the term, falling away, to the event of the rapture. Because that denotes the rapture as coming downward, rather than rising upward. It is only in America, where we change the meanings of words, to suit our desired outcome. The term, falling away means. That which was once believed, and practiced, is now being put away, or divorced and shunned. That which was pleasant and embraced, is now putrid, and worthless, and to be tossed as trash. This is the correct way of interpreting the term, falling away. But because it does not comply with the narrative we want it to be, our teachers have gone fishing for another word, which better supports their way of believing. Since the term, falling away, G646, only means to turn away from the faith. Then, our teachers went to the extreme edges of the meaning of the term, to find a more palatable word, and they found it in the word, depart. Number G868, in the Strong's Concordance. Notice these words, highlighted in the yellow. Depart. Depart from, and, to remove. These all are more in line with the thinking of these teachers, that the believers will depart from, or be removed from, the earth, ahead of the coming tribulation period, which is not what 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3 is at all, saying. But also highlighted in the yellow, are the words, to fall away, and become faithless, the original meaning of the term we began with. Does the word, depart in scripture, mean, to remove from one dimension to another dimension? And, does it mean to snatch away, out of the earth, into heaven, as being promoted by the teachers of our day? Let's take a look and see. There are fifteen times the word departed, or a variation thereof, is mentioned in scripture. Of those fifteen, ten means to remove, or separate to another location, in a horizontal direction. Three means, a defection from the faith. One is speaking of the departing of sickness. And one is the departing of an angel, by walking away, vanishing, or ascending, we do not know. But absolutely none of those departures, with maybe the exception of the angel, departed using a vertical direction. So, even using the word, depart, does not mean to lift off from the earth, but simply to go in another horizontal direction. Okay. Let's look at this from a different perspective. Let's see how we are actually caught up, and see if the term, falling away, and the word, depart, comes anywhere near how it will be played out. The term, caught up is, G726 in the Strong's Concordance. 
and highlighted in the yellow, it says. To seize, carry off by force. To snatch out, or away. And to catch away, or catch up. I see four attributes here, that we should compare to the term, falling away and the word, depart. They are. The act of being caught, captured, or seized. The act of being forcibly removed, plucked up, or snatched. The act of being directionally carried upward. And the event being the work of God. In this picture, we see believers that are caught, captured, and seized. No longer free to do as they please. They are forcibly being removed, or snatched away. They are directionally being carried upward from the earth. And this occurrence is a direct work of God. Now, according to the only meaning of the term, falling away, which means a defection from the faith, it has no comparison to the attributes of the term, caught up. However, the word, depart, does have with it, two attributes of the term, caught up, and that being. One can suddenly be caught, captured and seized as by the Roman soldiers. And one can be removed, or snatched away from one location to another, by the same Roman soldiers. But the direction of their taking, is always horizontal, and not vertical. And the occurrence of their taking, is a direct work of man, not God. In closing, I want to leave you with this verse of Scripture, saying, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Highlighted in the yellow, it says, Some shall depart from the faith. Notice in this instance of Scripture, the verb depart has with it the noun of faith, of which the verb is acting upon. However, the term, falling away, is a noun, without an action verb, acting upon the thing which is faith. They understood the subject of the noun, falling away to be their faith, that it will be their faith that would be forsaken. For it was their current tribulation acting upon their faith, to quench it, at the time of their reading of this letter. Therefore, since the term, falling away, is a noun and not a verb, it cannot be speaking of the rapture, as that occurrence is an action event. It is speaking of believers forsaking the faith, or a defection from the truth, and that must happen first, along with the revealing of the man of sin, before the second coming, that has in it, the resurrection and rapture of the saints. As long as the church continues to believe, the rapture and the second coming are two different events, happening at two different times, this controversy will not be solved, until that day, defines it. We need to deprogram ourselves, and reject, this error of thinking. The truth is. The resurrection and rapture are the two sides of a single coin. The coin itself is the second coming, and when it happens, so will the resurrection and rapture happen simultaneously, with it. Therefore, in the one day that His second coming occurs, in that same one day, according to Scripture, the resurrection and rapture will happen also. If you were once, on the path with Jesus, who has the power to lift you up to the heavens, and because of tribulation in your life, you turned and rejected Jesus, and now walk a path, which is powerless to raise you. Or if you have never accepted Jesus into your life and would like to be saved. Tell God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God, I believe He was dead and buried. And tell God, I believe He was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then, God will accept you back if you were backslidden away. And God will rejoice over you if you are new to the faith. And both of you, God has the power to raise you up from the earth. Thanks for watching. 
At this time, I believe the position of the rapture, being pre, or post, is so ingrained into our hearts, that only the day itself will define it. And those on the right side of it, will still love and aid those, who got it wrong. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Amen.